evening. Let's try that again. Good evening. My name is Ray Weaver. No, I have not lost my mind. Okay, we are um, we are getting ready. Of course, in less than a month. As a matter of fact, yesterday was we we're, were one month away from taking the Milton High School band on our second cruise in the past five years. This has um, become a part of our rotation, and uh, we're excited about that. Guys, we've got a lot of information that I want to go through tonight. Please make sure as you came in that um, each cruise participant got a packet. Uh, there's several handouts up here and, and packets of, of stuff stapled together. We're going to try to go through that as quickly as possible. My goal is to have you out of here by about 7.50 tonight, okay? But we've got a lot of information, important stuff that we've got to pass along with you because communication is key to this being a successful trip. Before we get started, though, I want to uh, draw your attention to the screen. I want to sort of show you a little build, build some excitement about our trip. I want to show you a little PowerPoint of some of the places, some of the things that we're going to see and you know, that we're going to do. I forgot you can mute the video projector in case you did not know that. Enchantment of the Seas. You'll see that's a picture of the ship. It's um, a very modernized looking ship. See the centrum area? That's the center of the ship, the kind of the public place. Centrum area. You can see there's lots of windows around the centrum. Beautiful, beautiful area there. Some of the public locations on the ship. That's the main dining room. The main theater on board where they see the shows and such. Some more public area on the ship. That's one of the bedrooms. You're going to see a video of one of the cabins. This is the buffet called the Windjammer. Those kids will spend a lot of time there for breakfast and lunch in particular. More shots of the wind jammer on the back of the ship. You'll see lots of windows back there and tables. That's the library on board. More chairs. Game room. I don't know. There may only be six games. I'm not sure. Public area. The fitness area. This is outside around the ship. Ship at night. Ship during the day. The pool deck. Solarium, that's the adults only pool area. Notice there's a big screen TV there for movies and such. You'll see another shot of that a little bit later. Now the pools always look much bigger in the pictures than they do live. They do have a Ben and Jerry's on board. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Some specialty shops. Rock climbing wall, there's also bungee trampoline. There's also live entertainment on board the ship. You'll sort of see where Coco Cay and Nassau is. Another photo of the ship. Now our first day, our first stop, will be in Royal Caribbean's private island at Coco Cay. You'll see the little red star up there where it's located uh, from um, Fort Lauderdale. You'll see some shots of Coco Cay. It's a private island. Our Royal Caribbean ship will be the, the only ship that's there that day, or should be. And it's like a little tropical paradise. Matter of fact, there may only be just a handful of folks that live on the island, and most of them will vote in that work there that day for Royal Caribbean. And it's just going to be a beach day. There's some other activities we'll talk about. You'll see all the people along the beach area there. Hammocks, beach chairs, lifeguards, picnic tables. There's other water activities we'll talk about a little bit later they can do there. Lots of beach chairs for sunny. Beautiful water. There's shopping, a little bit of shopping there at the Straw Market. Also, we'll eat lunch there. Those are all buffets. They'll open up the buffets. And of course, food is free. Food in the price. More water activities. Water slide. We'll talk about that a little bit later. 
nature trail. There's a water park there as well that they can get excursion tickets to. Or they can just hang out on the beach and swim and play. And that is Coco Cay. Okay. That will be our first full day on board the boat. We'll stop there. And then our second port of call will be Nassau, Bahamas. You see a picture of the island there? That's a view of the port as you're pulling in. Another view of the port. And then the downtown area, a few shops from downtown Nassau. Lots of shopping, the Diamonds International, all those big port um, businesses that you'll find in Cozumel, Alaska, are all also located in Nassau. Lots of jewelry, souvenirs. And of course the straw market. Now they built a new straw market that I couldn't find photos of. That's much better, but that is a wheel and deal bargain place that we'll talk about a little bit later as well. You can get all your name brand knockoffs, Coach, Gucci, all that kind of stuff. And you barter for it. You bargain with them. Paradise Island. Some of our folks will beat you to maybe go over to Paradise Island. Of course, Paradise Island is known for Atlantis. Now have an opportunity possibly to tour Atlantis. You see a few shots of Paradise Island. Some folks may go out on the catamaran to go snorkeling there as well. We'll talk about that and show you some videos a little later of that. But I just want to kind of give you an overview. So there will be snorkeling available. Also, some folks may do what they call the C&C &C tour, which is a land tour, and then they're in the Sea World Explore, which is a, you can go underwater on the boat, and you got a window that you can peer out if you're not into snorkeling. And then you'll see us in that picture, the gentleman in the middle. It's a personal friend of mine in Nassau. He's going to do an island tour for us. That's what he does. He's a tour guide. And we'll see the, the fort. No, his name's Felton. We'll see some of the fort stuff there. We'll see the Queen Staircase, which has a historical merit to it. And he'll take us into the good parts and the bad parts of the island. So you'll see the, the fancy houses and the poor houses. Probably down to Jumpin' New Beach, which is right there close to the port. You can see the cruise ships in port. It's a very colorful place. And to the Ardastra Gardens and Zoos, which they've got, it's a smaller zoo, but they've got wildlife and such there. But they're probably the most famous for their pink flamingos. And that you can actually interact with those pink flamingos and have your photo made up next to one. So that'll be our second port of call. You see them out there with the pink flamingos. And then, of course, we'll get back off the ship and we'll be doing Universal Studios Islands of Adventure. Just a few shots of that. excitement. Okay, so just a few of the locations, a few of the things that we're going to be talking about tonight. Guys, tonight is that meeting where we've really got to start hammering things down. We've got lots of forms to give you, but also I invited Mr. Thorpe to come out, our, the world's greatest principal, in case you weren't aware, to say a few words to you guys. Um, I remember a few years ago when um, we had the idea of taking out, I was actually on a cruise and I watched this band get on the front of me and went, oh, how does this work? And my wife convinced me to, um, we well, need to try that with the milk band. And um, I'll tell you, it was a high stress situation five years ago. And then I remember Mr. Thorpe saying, now this is my first year as principal. Don't make me lose my job too, okay? So, uh, but I'm gonna turn it over. Everybody give it up for Mr. Thorpe. Thank you for being here. Thank you for putting together uh, this trip. Folks, I hope you have a wonderful time and I hope that someone finds a way of taking Flat Mike to the Bahamas. <laughs> I certainly hope so, because he had a great time in New York City here a few years ago. So hopefully that'll happen. Listen, here's the deal when we're going to go on a band trip of this magnitude. Please bring back the same number of students you take. 
okay? If we lose a few, still some in the Bahamas, at least bring back the same number. All right? Uh, what an awesome responsibility many of you are going to be involved with and in helping us with this and helping create lifelong memories, not only for yourself, but for our students. I'm excited we're getting the opportunity to perform on the ship, but I'm more excited that some of them are going to get to go down that water slide that I saw in there. So I know that'll be a lot of fun. Just please, 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 please take care of our, our kids. And I know you will because they're your, your kids also. I think we have like one adult for about every two students. What I'm most concerned with is that we're only taking two police officers. With this crew, we may need about 10 police officers. Y'all watch that adult only pool, please. But have a great, great time and represent Milton High School the way that we know you would want to be represented and you know that I want to be represented as a principal of this school. But just have a wonderful time and a wonderful meeting. Thank you. Now, I shared with you guys the last time that we went, it was kind of a high-stress situation. I'll be honest, I was wound pretty tight. But one of the greatest things, um, when I look back at past trips, that was probably one of the greatest trips that we've ever taken, was the band on a cruise, because it gave our, chance, our students a chance to really shine. I remember feeling like a rock star on board that cruise ship, because everywhere we went, you know, folks were pulling up. That back then was the Port of Mobile, and we were on school buses. And I remember seeing their faces as they pulled in and went, Okay, but by about the second day of the trip, they were like, you're that band director. Oh, let me tell you about your kids. They were so great. They let us go first on the elevator. They were so polite and, and such. And guys, that's, that's what, we're trying, what we're, we're still after, is to leave those good impressions. Guys, I got a lot of information. What I want you to do is look at the packet that has the itinerary to start with. Bahama Cruise Informational Trip Meeting. We're going to work our way through this packet. We'll bounce to some of the other stuff as we get to it. And again, my, my goal is not to waste your time, but to communicate as efficiently and effectively as possible. You're going to see that our departure date is Sunday, March the 16th, okay, or Monday, March the 17th, depending on how you look at it, if you've been to bed yet or not, okay? About 11.30 that night, Sunday night, we're going to open up the band room. Parents, we're doing that for you, so you go ahead and drop everything off, and you're out up at 2 o'clock in the morning, okay, because I know some of you have to go to work on Monday. But the band room opens at 11.30 that night. You'll drop off medication, luggage, and students, if needed, at that time. And Kevin will give us a couple hours to get all that stuff. We'll probably meet about 1.30 with all the students, start the loading process. And at 2 o'clock, we'll leave for Port Canaveral. Uh, Port Canaveral is in the Cocoa Beach here. If you go to Orlando, hang east, and go straight to the Atlantic, then you'll run into Canaveral there, close to Cape Canaveral. It's about seven and a half hours travel time. And then, of course, we lose an hour traveling. Our goal is to get hit over our Gainesville around 8 o'clock that morning and stop at a rest area and provide them with a quick breakfast, maybe donuts or, or something like that. that we'll, we'll just kind of feed everybody breakfast because we're going to have a lunch buffet as soon as we get on the boat. Okay, so we want to feed them a big breakfast. But uh, we'll stop there for a little bit, let them get off the bus and stretch. And then around 11.30 that morning, we will arrive at Port Canaveral, unload our luggage, and we'll talk. We've got um, one more parent-student meeting one more student meeting and a chaperone meeting. We'll talk more at the next parent student meeting about luggage and luggage tags and porters and all that good stuff. But about 12 noon, we'll start the check-in process. And we've got a system that we'll do that where our chaperones will be assigned a room and uh, our chaperones will also be assigned a check-in team. And they'll have all that information and the two adults will make sure the four students and themselves all get checked in. And we'll be around there helping to handle that. About 12.30, we'll board the Royal Caribbean Enchantment of the Seas. They'll have a chance to look around the ship. They'll have a chance as well to um, eat the lunch buffet. Let me remind you that the food on board, for the most part, everything except the specialty shops, and if you order room service after midnight, everything is included in the cost. That means you go to the buffet as many times as you want to, and the pizza buffet and all that stuff as much as you need to. Okay, So, um, so all the meals will be pretty much included. Lunch buffet on board the ship takes place at 3.30, usually somewhere around 1 o'clock to 1.30. The cabins become available. They'll open the doors to the hallways, and um, our folks will be able to start moving into their cabins. And at the next meeting as well, we'll talk about luggage and carry-on items, that kind of stuff, what to put in each one, so that when they get to the rooms, they'll have certain items in the carry-on bags that they may need, such as a swimsuit if they want to go and hit the pool, that kind of stuff. We'll talk about that at the next meeting. But um, cabins will be available. And then at 4 o'clock, there is an emergency drill that is mandatory for all passengers. They do a roll call. 
and make sure everybody's there. They check all the rooms, make sure that everybody's in the emergency room. That's where you go to your, your um, muster station in case there was an emergency, and you learn all the procedures as far as how to put on your life jacket, how you get the lifeboats, all that kind of stuff, which is something you want to be at. Okay? Um, but we've got that going on at 4 o'clock, and then at 4.30, by voyage, we'll leave Florida. We'll pull out Fort Canaveral. It's about 15 minutes, and we're in the Atlantic from the time we leave the port. Okay? Um, and then just 30 minutes later, there's an informational meeting. On board the boat, we will have a festival at seas represented from the company, uh, Sred Tours Festival at Seas. We will have a representative, a liaison, that's with us. And um, they will go over all the ship rules. <laughs> we'll do that before we leave, but they'll go over all their rules with the kids and, and kind of make that contact and introduce themselves and talk to us about the week and different things that are going to go on. And then they're there the whole time. They're staying on board the ship with us. And if I've got to, if we have a need, I'll let her, that person know. Last time it was a lady, I'll let them know. And um, they communicate with the captain and the folks on the ship. We are a big group on the ship. Okay? And then you'll see that right after that meeting at 545, we've got dinner seating. My Fair Lady is just one dining room on this ship, but it's huge. You saw the picture. Um, two stories there. Um, we'll have our dinner, our seating on deck four at My Fair Lady dining room. And then late curfews. Okay? Why? Because the, the, the youth activities go until late at night. We learned that the last time. We were thinking, okay, 9.30 curfew. Well, it was just, it was just getting cranked up at 9.30. All right, so we learned a lot of stuff on the last cruise we took the man. A lot of rules we put in place, go, okay, that ain't gonna work. Um, so 11.59, midnight curfew, and we'll do cabin checks. Some of the adults will come around and do that. And then we set, we sell all night from Port Canaveral. The next morning we wake up, eight o'clock, we're at Coco Cay, Bahamas. Again, that's the small private island owned by Royal Caribbean. Okay, so as far as there being locals and all that, not any locals and so forth around, except for just a few workers. Probably about 8.30, 8.45, and this is still attended by Timber. We're going to meet up. We're going to go to shore together, together, okay? Students can't go on and off the boat without an adult. So we'll go off the boat together in our teams. And then once they get to the island, they've got free play from about 9 o'clock until about 3 o'clock on the island. They'll go find their beach chairs. They'll swim. They can do some of the other activities. Um, and they, again, they can't return the ship without a chaperone. They've got to have that adult with them to present their card. If somebody's got to run back and forth to get something, they'll have to get a chaperone to go with them. We'll talk about all that in the next meeting. But um, we may have some chaperones that want to go back at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock, and we'll let groups go with that as well. Um, but all of us at 3 o'clock, we'll, we'll head back to the ship. Why? Because it's formal night. The ship's not going to set sail to 5, but probably around 4.45 or 5, what we did last time was on formal nights, we had all of our group gather up in the big central area. We arranged with the ship's photographers, or our festival of Caesar up did, and we had a big, huge, matter of fact, it's right there, had a big group photo made. You wanna bring that up here real quick? So, we had a big photo. Now, of course, our faces are all about, you know, um, a, a tiny millimeter, but we had a group photo made, so everybody say, hey, that's me, okay? And these, of course, are available for purchasing. So we'll do our group photo for one night, and then we'll have dinner at 5.45. Now listen to me, the first two nights, everybody eats in the dining room, okay? Because I think it's important for our students to go through that process, to, to know what it's like to have a waiter, assistant waiter, maitre d'. They bring you, you know, your menu, if you want to try escargot, snail, for those of us from the South, okay? <laughs> if you want to try it, try it, it's free. If you don't like it, order something else. I usually order two or three appetizers. You can tell. Okay? So, but the first two nights in our, in our one of our student meetings on March the 11th that afternoon, we're going to go over dining etiquette, you know, the, the, the forks and the, the spoons and, and all that kind of stuff because I think, and I learned this the last time, and students, you may disagree, I knew five years ago the students enjoyed opportunities to dress up. Matter of fact, the last two nights you don't have to eat at the dining room. And I remember the, the last night of the trip, they all came back in dressed in their formal wear. And I'm like, guys, it's casual wear. It's the last night, Mr. Weaver. Okay? And so uh, uh, it's a great experience. So those first two nights, everybody will leave the dining room. Now, if you get done with your meal and you're done at 7.30 and you want to go to the buffet, that's, I'm fine with that. Okay? Well, I don't like duck and I don't like snails and I don't like steak and I don't like lobster. Well, they're not doing lobster this time. Okay? Because it's a five night cruise. But, um, it's your chance to try that out. On Wednesday, well, you'll notice dinner seating, curfew at midnight on Wednesday. We'll get to Nassau, Bahamas. We're going to be there for a long time, from 7 to 1 to midnight, but we ain't going to be in Nassau from 7 to midnight. Okay? About 8.45, I'm sorry, about 8 o'clock that morning, 
We will set out in excursion teams, and I'm going to show you the different excursion teams that we're going to have for students and adults to sign up for here later on this week. <coughs> These are chaperone-led groups. They'll be adults with each group, and I'll know where they are. I'll know where they're going. I'll know when they come back, and Mr. Schultz, Ms. Weaver, and us. Everybody will be checking in and checking out with us, and, um, but it's a real structured activity where they'll be sightseeing Nassau, but with adults and students in the groups and, and such, and we'll discuss that a little later. But at 5 o'clock that night, everybody um, will be back on board the ship. They'll all check in. The team leaders, the adults will check in and go, all four of my kids are back or all ten of my, our kids are back. So that I know by 5 o'clock that everybody is back on board the boat. And we won't go back off the boat. Okay? We'll stay on the boat and enjoy the evening activities. We'll do dinner either in the main dining room or at the buffet. I understand on Wednesday, March the 19th, there's also a late night pirate buffet up on the pool deck. Okay? So if you got pirate wear... You may want to bring it, our Okay? So, you may want to be aware of that. And um, at midnight, we'll depart Nassau. And since we have a late departure that night, curfew will be at 1. Now, let me explain this. The last time we had these late night curfews, we are going to do a room check. Okay? We're going to talk about this a little bit more in the next meeting. But when we're going to do a room check, last time we had a hard time finding out if they were in the room because a lot of them were asleep already. So, we're going to set one individual per night up in the room to make sure they're awake. Because last time we were calling and just banging on doors so we finally got somebody in the room to wake up. Okay? But on 1 o'clock curfew Wednesday night, on Thursday, Thursday is our fun day at sea. We don't port anywhere. We're just in the water cruising all day long. There's many activities on board the ship. Matter of fact, Miss Weaver, I'll let you know. Here it is. Okay? Matter of fact, every night in the room, they're going to get something that looks like this, which is a newsletter that cruise compass. Thanks, Miss Rose, for bringing this back to us. And um, it'll have all the different activities of the day, kind of a schedule and different things they can do, from bingo to trivia. There's, of course, a, a teen club, 15 to 17-year-olds, that has different sporting events that go on during the day, or video game, or board games, and just a ton, you can see them on the back, of different activities for folks to do, okay? Every night they'll get this. So that fun day at sea, they can lay around their room and sleep, watch TV, hit the pool, lay out and get some sun, or just like many of the activities that are going on. Then that night, dinner 545 in the main dining room, or at the buffet, and then you see at 730 following dinner, we have a debarkation meeting, which means learn how you're going to get off the boat with our festival that sees represents. She'll meet with the group again, um, and of course that's mandatory as well, and she'll talk about how, what to do with your luggage, how you put it outside your room on that Thursday night, and talk about how everything's going to take place the next day so that we can keep all hundred some people together along with the other thousand something people on board the boat so we can keep all our stuff together the next day. Okay? So we've got that meeting that night, the embarkation meeting, and then you'll see curfews at midnight, cabin checks. Then Friday morning we'll wake up where it's not the portmobile, you know, I recycle stuff and go back in and change it. We've only proved it about ten times. Okay, but the Port of Can or Port Canaveral, we'll eat breakfast, we'll begin the demarcation process, and then we'll get on board the boat, we should be, I mean, on board the buses, hopefully no later than 10.30, probably earlier than that, and we will head back to Orlando, about a 45 minutes to an hour drive, and go straight to Universal Islands of Adventure theme park. We'll spend all day there, and while we're there, we're going to give them one meal voucher, so they're going to be responsible for one meal, and that is either lunch or dinner, okay? Or they can eat the, the big breakfast buffet that morning, and then about 4 o'clock or so that evening, you know, grab a snack and then use the meal voucher that night. Those meal vouchers are for stuff like hamburgers, french fries, dessert, and drink at some of the concession areas there. Um, so 11 o'clock, meet the park universal. I did discover today that Islands of Adventure closes at 8 o'clock. But, uh, but we'll probably give them another hour or so, maybe till 9 or 9.30. And um, Universal City Walk, when you come out of Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure, it's a bunch of restaurants and things to do right there. Um, we'll leave out. 10, 30, 11 o'clock, and then notice that um, we're, do, we're, we're pushing it back late, parents, for you, so you're not up here at 4 o'clock to pick up your child. You'll be up here at 6 a.m., okay? So um, about 6 o'clock, we plan to ride back into high school, unload, and go home. That's kind of the itinerary in a nutshell. Guys, this is subject to change, okay? We're every day we're on the phone with the um, with straight A tours out of Orlando, and, um, and things are always kind of being tweaked and changing. But I want you to look at the breakdown of the trip group. We have 85 students going, 39 boys, 46 girls. There are 49 adults. <laughs> awesome. That's a little, much less than, you know, than a one to two ratio, okay? There's also five children, you know, smaller siblings of our kids. 
Um, of the group of adults that are going, six of us are Milton High School staff members, and then 10 of us are Santa Rosa County School Board employees. Okay, that is outstanding. On board, we have seven vertical, vertical medical personnel. I think my brain, my mouth doesn't work like my brain does. Seven medical personnel. Um, doctors, Dr. Mayu is going with us. Every year, Dr. Mayu doesn't go with us. I always end up in the emergency room somewhere. So thank goodness he's going with us again. And he was a lifesaver on the last cruise, the night that it got really rough. But um, we've got several, several nurses in the group that travel with us. And uh, we've got some first responders. There's seven medical personnel and two law enforcement officers that will be going with us as well. Now, what Mr. Thorpe said about needing 10 is a lie. That's just a joke. He was kidding around with us. It's a great group to travel. Let's flip the page. Now, one of the things that we need to talk about tonight, because over the next week or so, over the next couple of weeks, you're going to need to work on this, is the Royal Caribbean Sea Pass pre-registration. Okay? And if you'll notice on here, it says Sea Information page included in this packet. So if you'll want to keep that page open, find the one that says Royal Caribbean pre-registration set sail pass instructions at the top. Royal Caribbean pre-registration set sail pass instructions. Now, we need everybody going on the trip, adults and, and passengers that are going on the trip, to go through this process, okay? What you'll notice you're going to do is you're going to go on to royalcaribbean.com, and of course, follow the instructions that are on there, okay? You're going to input all your guest information, your name, birth, you know, and, and other information as it calls for. Part two, you're going to set up an onboard expense account, okay? And on that, we'll talk, uh, probably a good place to talk about that right now. Ms. Weaver, do you want an onboard expense account? Let me talk about it. Okay. Guys, on the onboard expense account, is it on here somewhere? I know where it is. Yeah, it'll be a little bit later. We'll talk about it later. Okay. Um, that's where you set up a credit card, or you'll tell, tell them whether or not you're going to pay cash. The cruise ticket contract will take place right there as well. And then the set sell passes, if you look at the last part where it says set sell pass, Okay, we will actually print those for the students. Adults, you can print your own. Students, you will not be able to, okay, because an adult has to sign off on your cruise ticket contract. Is that correct, Ms. Weaver? So if you look at part three, cruise ticket contract, and I put in bold for student cabins, we will sign off on their ticket contracts. You can only do parts one and part two. We will do part three and part four for you, okay? Adults that are going on the trip, you can go ahead and do part three and part four. All right, but um, Royal Caribbean's website will not allow children without an adult in the room to, um, to sign off on that. Okay? So, now, if you'll look at the next couple of pages that goes along with this, here's important information you're going to need. You'll need to find your passenger's name, and you'll see the cabin that they've been assigned. That's not as important as the other information, but you're going to see the booking number. That is how you're going to sign up when you get to the Royal Caribbean site. It's going to ask you for the booking number and the last name, Ms. Weaver. Help me out. You did this other I know part of the light in the back of my hand. You don't really? Last name, date of birth. Yeah, that's yeah, close to part of it. Okay. Um, booking number, it lasts for the student or the pastor's last name and their date of birth. You put that in. Okay, so the name of the ship, Enchantment of the Seas, and the selling date, March 17th. And you'll see all that back on the, on the first page of the packet that I gave you. Okay? So, again, let me reiterate, between now and March 1st, what you need to do is go to the Royal Caribbean website, follow the instructions, and they sent us these. Okay, this is from Straight A Tours. Part 1, your guest information. Part two, set up your onboard expense account. Again, you can either set it up with a credit card and read that information, because we'll talk about that here in a little bit later, or you can tell them you're going to set it up with cash once they get there and check in. Okay? If you're having any problems with that, guys, please see me, see Ms. Weaver, send me an email. If it's a student, have them come in to see one of us during the school day, and we'll do what we can to help get registered. Okay? One reason we gave you the March first day, that gives us a, a couple of days, a few days, for us to go back through and to make sure everybody's, to check everybody's rooms to make sure that everybody has signed in and checked in. Okay, is there any questions about that? I don't need to read through all this for you, we're good? Okay, let's move on. Documents needed to board the ship. 
Okay. If you look back to the other packet, it's on the back page, documents needed to board the ship. You must have either a U.S. passport or a passport or a birth certificate. Okay. One or the other. All right. Um, on passports, well, you, get, you can still get passports, but they must be expedited uh, because it takes about two to three weeks, and we're only about a month away, about four weeks away from the cruise. You'll see we called the other day the Santa Rosa Clerk of Court's office, and here's the prices for those expedited. You'll see if you're 15 and under, it's 154.85 plus you pay them 53.11. That's if they take the photo, or if you go to like CVS and get the photo, it's ten dollars cheaper for them. It's 43.11 if you provide your own passport photo. And if they're 16 and over, you'll see the price is 184.85 plus 53.11 or 43.11, depending on whether they take the photo or not. They take personal check or money order only, no cash or credit cards, okay? So if you wanted to go with a passport, you can go to Santa Rosa Clerk of Court's office, the phone number's on here. There's still time to have it expedited, okay? But birth certificate, you can bring that and let me encourage you, it must be a state-issued birth certificate, okay? Ray Weaver's first cruise, I'm talking to third person, I know. My first cruise, okay, the birth certificate, I've had all my life a picture of the hospital, my little handprints, my little footprints, I mean, and I showed up at Port Canaveral and they went, that's not your birth certificate. And I, I mean, I was destroyed, it's, it birth certificate. okay, but um, they, um, and so I had to go through a, 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 a lot of hoops to, to get on board the boat, but they didn't want to let me off the boat because my birth certificate, they sent me, said boy all over it. But, um, <laughs> but birth certificate, if you're born in Florida, it's real easy. Simply get up to Santa Rosa County Health Department over here, Nancy H. Okay, Nancy H. The Schofield told me is the lady that we contact over there, and there's a phone number for them. It's $12 for a certified copy. If you're born in other states, you need to contact the vital records for that state, or you might call Nancy H over at the Santa Rosa County Health Department, she gave you the appropriate phone number. Thank goodness I was born in Alabama, and we were able to look it up and call information and, and, and so forth, okay? Um, now, also, if you have a birth certificate, you're going to need a government-issued photo ID. You have a passport, the passport has your photo, it's a federal document that gets you in. If you got a birth certificate, you're going to need to have a government-issued photo ID. That's either a driver's license or a military ID to work. Now, there's also the driver's license um, office will give you a photo license, not a driver's license, but a photo ID from the driver's license office, and that is $25 for the photo ID. Let's say for those that are 14 or 15 that don't have a driver's license yet, what? They don't have to have a driver's license. Oh, they don't. Okay, thought they did. All right. They'll say you're 16 and you don't have a driver's license. You can get that right there. Santa Rosa County Tax Collector's Office behind McDonald's, you see the phone number. And uh, when you go in, you'll need the birth certificate, a social security card, two forms of address ID, and that can be mom and dad's ID as well, all right? Um, now note this, at the next meeting, March the 11th, we will be collecting these documents, either the passport or the birth certificate, okay? Not the photo ID, but the passport, the birth certificate, and so we can put them together in an envelope for the checking groups, and then we'll lock those, Miss Nancy will in the school vault up at the front. Let me explain to you why. I can only imagine us getting down to Port Canaveral with 140-something people, and one person goes, on my dresser. That person can't go on board the boat. The rest of us can. We're going to have to leave little Susie standing at the port waiting to find the boat. So what we do at March the 11th, this worked the last time, is we will, you'll bring those in that night. That gives us about five days to go through every envelope, make sure we've got all the appropriate documentation. We lock those in the school ball that day. If we forget them, nobody sells. So, um, so that we'll take those with us and then we get to Port Canaveral. They'll break into their teams and we'll hand the envelope for Team A and Team B. We'll hand those to the adults, those two adults and their four students. We'll go get in line and go through the process. And then afterwards, we've got a hold of them. We'll collect them back. We'll lock them in our safe. And then um, we'll get those back to you once we get back. That way nothing's lost. Well, you know, I'll have it in my room. I don't know what happened to them. I think my roommate ate it, okay, or whatever. So, um, so we'll collect those and then we'll give those back afterwards. All right, so that's why we do it. That's why we'll collect those. Those will be safe uh, because, again, if we were to get down there and one person were to forget it, that person would not be allowed on the boat. Okay. Um, onboard spending. Let's talk about that. We talked about the when you register here a little while ago, the pre-registration. All purchases on board the ship are charged to your C-Pass card. C-Pass card, which oh, sorry, 
It looks just like that. It's funny, I had it too close to my mouth. Um, it looks like a little room key. It serves as your room key. All charges on board the boat, okay, are on this. You don't pay cash anywhere on board the boat, okay? If you go to the souvenir shop, and they've got little stores and stuff where they sell gold chains and, and souvenirs and snacks and that kind of stuff, you know, like a, like a convenience store. Um, you can't pay cash. Everything goes on the car. And what you have to do is set up an onboard account, um, either when you pre-register or when we get there that day. It says participants must put down a minimum cash deposit of $50 or a debit credit card in their name at check-in. So, so students can't take mom and dad's credit card and use it. They won't allow that. All right. Notice though that Visa gift cards are the only type of gift cards that are accepted. So you can go with a Visa gift card. It can't be any other kind. Only a Visa gift card. Okay. Parents attending the trip may put their child on their credit card at check-in. We're checking in that day. We will make it available to where you can put your child on your credit card. So that'll work. We'll make sure that happens. No cash, again, is exchanged on the ship. Possible purchases on board the ship are souvenirs, shopping, soft drinks, okay? Soft drinks aren't included. Um, I think lemonade, iced tea, which is unsweet, by the way, and water, and then at breakfast, like orange juice and apple juice and milk are the only things that, that are, um, are included in coffee that are included. So if they want to purchase soft drinks, you're looking some of the neighborhood of $2.50 to $3 a soft drink. That's a can, they give you a cup. Okay, or give you a glass with a can. There's a soft drink plan on board. That soft drink plan is kind of cool now. If you know the machine is like they've got a firehouse subs, that's the smart machine, and you push the button and, and you know kind of choose from a video screen. They've got those now. For, for students, the soft drink plan, the whole time we're gone is $18, and for adults is $26 for the four-day cruise. Okay, that's the total amount for that. And they give you a souvenir mug or souvenir cup, and you must have that cup when you go up to the soda machine. It, it's the only thing that triggers it, okay? So um, you've got that. The video arcade, like I said, I saw six games on the picture. Um, bingo cards, photos, there will be photos all over the ship. Formal night, we'll take a group photo. All the other nights, they've got usually all these different photo backdrops set up on your way to dinner. So if you want to have photos made with your friends, um, those photos usually range from smaller ones being 10 bucks to $22, okay? Spa services, you know, the, get, get that back rub or that haircut or get your hair did, all that kind of stuff. Your hair did. Um, specialty coffees. There is a specialty coffee place we'll talk about in a little bit that serves Starbucks coffee on board. But there's a, there's a minimal charge, okay? You know, a minimal charge to that. There's milkshakes and desserts in the specialty shop. All those things are generally less than five bucks. So three to three, three fifty, that kind of stuff. There's port excursions, which we'll go over here in a few minutes, okay? and just a variety of other things that they can spend cash on on board the boat. Notice this, that if a balance is owed at the end of the cruise, it will say they put cash down. This must be settled before students allowed to leave the ship. If little Johnny puts $50 down on his, his room and spends $150, when they go to scan his car to leave, they're going to hold him, the security's going to hold him until he pays the 100 So we can't charge $150, and um, I don't know if their cards will let them do that or not. It, it, it starts declining, yeah. And you can check the balance. Yeah. You can always go to the purser's desk and check the balance as well, okay? Any remaining amount will be refunded on the last day of the cruise. You'll go to the purser's desk there. Oh, that's not under door, okay. My wife is, is much more on top of this than I am. Um, we've been trying to get bands ready and all that. Um, band bank as well is a, a, something that we'll provide and talk a little about next time for students that don't want to hold on to all their cash but want to deposit money. Ms. Foster, our school bookkeeper, right over here, is usually in charge of that for us. And um, guys, we're only going to do the band bank on two days because they're not going to need cash on Tuesday necessarily. They can take it with them if they do. But on Wednesday, on the day we go into Nassau, they're not going to need it for their day at sea. And then we'll open the band bank again on Friday for the day that we get off board the boat that day. Okay? Am I that boring? <laughs> um, so, on board spending, again, a Visa gift card, or if you have a, a debit or um, charge card, in their name, they can use that, or they can put cash down. Does everybody sort of understand that? And guys, again, if you've got questions, see me, see Miss Weaver, or several of us in here can help you with that, okay? Coco K. We're going to take tender boats to Coco K as a group around 8.30 or 9 that morning. Students will not be allowed to return back to ship alone. We talked about that earlier. They must be accompanied by a chaperone or staff member. There are excursions that are available on Coco K. We'll talk about those here real shortly. And... Um, 
and they're payable on board the ship. We're not going to set up their Coco Cay excursions because most of those are like, yeah, I want to kayak that day, or yeah, I want to play on the water slide that day, or, or I want to rent a beach float, okay? Um, so we'll let them, they'll set those up on their own, all right? Um, floating mats, again, may be rented there as well. Uh, sunblock and beachwear is definitely needed for that activity. Please, 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 sunblock, sunblock, sunblock. We don't want, and we've seen this in the past, last year, okay? Yeah, crispy band kids that can't walk and put their arms down, okay? So sunblock is extremely important. We'll review that again next day. This is a beach day. They can swim. They can hang out on the beach or lay out in the sun. Other items that they want to bring for that day is like beach toys, like frisbee football, beach bag, beach towel. You know, they may want to bring a snorkel and a dive mask. I think they probably went on there. But you may want to bring your own. I always take my own. Yes. The ship will have beach towels, so they won't need to bring their own with them. They can rent them. They, can, they rent them for free. They'll give them the towels if they go to shore, and then they just return them. That way they're Right. Gonna... But now you're talking about the ones where they have to show their cards or the ones in the ring? Yeah. Well, yeah. Be careful, because if they don't return them, those beach towels are expensive. Yeah. That's why I kind of recommend they bring their own for that, okay? There are some available that usually leave beach towels in your room. Let's say there's four in there. There's four students. If one doesn't show back up, and uh, those beach towels are about 25 bucks. Okay? So I recommend you bring your own, okay, so that, you, you know, if you leave it, it's yours. All right? Moving on right here. Um, students may wish to have a little cash for souvenirs while on Coco Cake. Okay. Ms. Rose, do you remember if the straw market there is independent? Do they take cash or is it on your ship card? Um, Okay, because um, usually those folks are from the outside, they, they, they vote did, them in. Yeah, they did in Lavity when they did it there, that's what we Okay, so they, may, they want to buy souvenirs that day, and the guys, they're going to see the same souvenirs the next day in Nassau, probably even cheaper, okay, because they kind of got a little corner market going right there on that little island, Coco Kenny, so long. But they may want to bring cash only for souvenirs. Royal Caribbean provides the food while we're on the island. Again, it'll be like a cookout type thing going on that day, and then we'll return back to ship as a group around 3 o'clock. And then notice in Nassau, we're going to do pre-planned excursions will take place. These are going to be reserved through me and will be paid in advance of the trip, our next trip paid. Okay? Why? Because these are the ones that book up. These we want to go ahead and try to get booked this week, get the payments in in the next two weeks. And so that, you know, if we have 60 kids that want to do the snorkeling or want to do the, the, the SeaWorld Explorer thing, um, they'll still be in those spots. Okay? But unfortunately, we booked those to the travel company, they booked them to the Royal Caribbean. We got to pay for them as well up front. Okay? So um, we'll talk about the actual excursion then. All students will have a chance to shop downtown before returning to the trip. And all groups should have that opportunity to walk around a little bit downtown with their adults and especially hit the straw market. Everybody needs to experience the straw market. Okay? It is, um, if you're claustrophobic, you might want to stay on the perimeter of the straw market. Okay? Because it's real tight and there's lots of people and there's lots of stuff. Now, we'll tell you, if you've walked about 30 or 40 yards down one aisle, you've seen everything that's in the whole place because the next aisle over, it's the same kind of stuff. Okay? But um, people are high pressure. They're trying to get you to buy stuff. Okay? Because they're making commission. I think the government runs a straw market. They're making commission off of it. But again, what that helps you is, and we'll talk at the next meeting a little bit more, but you can barter with it. You can bargain with them. You know, and they'll say, $40. You go, no, I'll give you 15 Okay, 35 No, I'll give you 17 You bargain, bargain back and forth. But uh, a great place to get souvenirs, relatively cheap. Um, most places, most places in Nassau accept U.S. currency and major credit cards, but they won't accept debit cards. So either make sure you got cash or a major credit card. Um, there's no need for you to exchange money and get Bahamian money or anything like that before we leave. Okay, you may you make an exchange with them if you want to get a Bahamian dollar or a Bahamian quarter. They may exchange for you a little bit there just as a souvenir. That's fine. I would highly recommend bringing small bills. Don't bring a hundred. You know, when you're bargaining down to fifteen dollars, and well, I'm paying you know, <laughs> Not that I think they'll steal it, but you know, use your small bills and so you can really bargain. Oh, fifteen dollars right here. Okay, so be smart with that. Um, bring shopping money, lunch money. You, you'll find lunch. Now, there's some, some places that are somewhere familiar. There's a Hard Rock Cafe. Um, I'm trying to remember. I've only been to Nassau five or six times. Is there a fast food type place? I can't remember. Uh, there's a KFC, yeah. Okay, downtown, they'll find every little food vendors and little restaurants and so forth set up. Okay? Um, 
So they will need lunch money that day, and possibly if they go on the Atlantis excursion, the group decides to stay longer, when the shuttle, you know, longer than the shuttle, um, they'll need transportation money back. <coughs> the bank will be available that morning prior to leaving the ship. Okay? Excursions. Any questions about Tokyo Bay or Nassau? Now we're going to talk about what we're going to do on those islands. <coughs> we haven't talked through this before. You'll find your excursion list. It looks like a chart in the front. Let me kind of explain to you how to, how to use this, how to figure. Looks like a chart. You'll notice Coco Cay that we've got a whole bunch of different excursion options right there, the whole page, okay, from a Paracel Adventure Tour, and you'll see the restrictions, okay, to the different times. Now understand that the Paracel Adventure Tour may only be available at 11 o'clock by the time we get on board the boat, and you get yours booked, but you'll see, and, and, and students, you pay the adult price. Children is like 10 and under, I think, okay? So if you want to do the Paracel Adventure Tour, it's $79. And they'll pay that on board the boat, okay, towards their account. Bahamas Marine Life and Encounter Eco Boat Tour is $29. It lasts 45 minutes. The Right Choice Glass Bottom Boat Tour, one and a half hours, is $35. Everybody see how that sort of reads? Okay. Uh, looking on down, you see the Snorkel Adventure, Underwater Treasure Hunt, Kayak Adventure, the Aqua Park. Now understand, it's $16, but it's only for an hour. You get a wristband, and you're out, you get to play on the Aqua Park for an hour. The Water Slide is all day. It's $22. Eco Adventure Boat Tour, the Aqua Park Water Slide Combo is 32, and it's for an hour. But I think, okay, yeah. Coco Cay Nature Walk, oh, it is actually, you gotta pay for that. $24. The Teen Adventure Pack um, is 49, and the Kayak Adventure Snorkel Combo is 60. Now, if you'll notice, after that, on the bottom of the page and the next pages, I've given you the descriptions, and Ms. Weaver's put this together, off Royal Caribbean's website. So let's say you're looking at, okay, what do I get for the kayak adventure and snorkel combo for 60 bucks? You can go, and they're in order just like they're on the chart, and you can read about those. Everybody understand that? So, Coco K, again, that's on their own. We're going over as a group. We're pretty much coming back as a group. That's the private island. Okay? Now, we get the next day, we get to Nassau. You'll flip the second page, look on the back, you're going to see a short chart. But this is where we're going around in teams. This is where we have so many adults there, so many kids, okay? And um, you're going to notice um, that we are offering four different excursions, okay, that day. Why? Because we're doing teams. Now, I will tell you this. That some of these, you may be able to do more than one excursion, okay? And we'll, we'll kind of talk as we go through. The first one, we've got a little two-minute video to show you. Miss Kelly, will you hit those lights right there around the corner? Is the Atlantis Discover Atlantis Tour for $59. Mr. Schultz? Oh, hold on, let me unmute. Okay, go ahead. When you go to Paris, you see the Eiffel Tower. When you go to New York, you see the Statue of Liberty. When you come to Nassau, you come to Atlantis. Stroll around property. See all of our picture-perfect beaches. Walk through the recreation of the lost city. While navigators tell you about the mythical artifacts of Atlantis, into the largest open air marine habitat in the entire world, representing about 100 different species. Breath is taken away when you look at the magnificent views around the resort. It's a very, very beautiful experience to have. So that's the Nassau, that's just kind of a little snippet. Oh, I'm sorry, not Nassau, the Atlantis, Discover Atlantis Tour. Now I'll tell you, I've been to the Atlantis two or three times, and it is a beautiful aquarium. And then, of course, with the, the artifacts that make it give that Atlantis feel, and there's areas you can kind of walk under the aquarium. Um, there are chandeliers that are just a blown glass that are 
just wonderful creations. I mean, it's hard to explain. What are you pointing out for that? 24 karat gold ceilings. Oh, yeah, ceilings in there, 24 karat gold and such. Okay? So, if that kind of, you dig that kind of stuff, you dig checking out the resort. Okay? Pretty much it's a tour of the resort. It's about two and a half hours. This is put on by Royal Caribbean. Okay? This is their folks. Um, but you'll see it's $59. It lasts about two and a half hours. And you can read the description right there. And it actually only takes place at 1.30 that day. Okay? So that's actually an afternoon excursion. So you do something in town, maybe eat lunch, and then be at the meeting place at 1.30 to go on that excursion. Okay? Also, there's a Nassau Sea and Sea Island tour that morning at 8.15. It's three hours long. It's $63. And um, on that, you can read, kind of read down below there. It says a 15-minute walk. You get on a transfer boat. That shows you the Sea Gardens Marine Park. They fall out along the way, enjoy a scenic ride to the Nassau Harbor, past Paradise Island upon arrival aboard the Sea World Explorer, the unique vessel that remains above sea level at all times while it's whole. The underwater observatory is five feet below, and through your own personal window, you'll observe a delicate colony of coral known as the Sea Gardens. So, Mr. Schultz, you got a video on that, correct? Yep. Ms. Henderson? The sewer water explorer is a semi submersible submarine. It's like 10 feet under the water. It's like a whole different world down there. But what we do with the CNC is we take them on the one tour. We have a lot of superstars who lives out here. We just put in a few houses. And we go in the submarine. That was our first house, by the way. Or like different species of fish. It was very nice. After the submarine tour, they come back down. So that's tour. That, that's the, the C and C tour. C being the water, and then the other C being that you do some of the touring up to the um, Finn Castle Fort and, um, and several of the other things. So if you're kind of into seeing both fish and seeing parts of the island, you've got that three hour tour, 63 bucks. And then there's the seahorse sailing and snorkeling. Got a video on that one? Yeah, okay. Mr. Schultz. We've done this before, it's on a catamaran. It's good to come out on the islands and now and then get some sun. Be relaxed, get your sun time. Just relaxing and enjoying. A lot of people like the catamaran. There's always space, it's never crowded. The most favorite place for the person to be on the boat is lying in the lamps. But the trip is about a three and a half hour trip. It's about 45 minutes out to the island where we're snorkeling. Where we go is called Apple Island. It's one of the best snorkeling spots around in the area. We got angelfish, pirate a lot of fat coral, green corals. Very live down here. After everyone gets on board, the bar is open. We have a very friendly style. There is a non alcoholic drink on your <laughs> All the guests smiling and trying to have a good time. At the end of that, that makes us feel good. So, if you're into snorkeling, then that may be the excursion. You know, I'll tell you, we did that one back in June of this past year. Okay, I've done diff several different snorkeling excursions at different places. In the Caribbean, and uh, the, the one thing about that I do want you to be aware: the day we went, it was deep snorkeling. It was you were ten or twelve feet from the bottom, and it was choppy. I noticed on the video that there's lots of waves that are, that are coming. But um, but again, we saw quite a bit of fish. The yellow, especially the yellow and the white and the black ones, um, we saw a lot of those. And, and you'll see some bigger fish and so forth down near the bottom. 
and starfish and so forth on the bottom. So if snorkeling's your thing, now the, 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 the ride out on the catamaran was awesome. As you're going there by Paradise Island and you're seeing all these stars homes and I mean that's really cool. Okay? And yeah, they do have the, the party punch on the way back, but it's not alcoholic for the children. Okay? And for the adults too on board this trip. Alright, so um, notice that it's $49, about three and a half hours. Now notice the last one, it doesn't have a tour code. This is a private island tour in the Ardastro Gardens and Zoo with Felton. The first time we went to Nassau, um, I guess 2008 or so, um, I got off board the boat with a, with a friend of mine, and he and I were walking, and, um, and, and they'll hound you when you get off the boat. You know, come here, mine. Come on, let me, you know, let me take you on a tour. Let me take you on. I mean, there will just be 50 to 60 folks that are trying to get you to get in the taxi when I'm taking a tour. Or, come on, let me braid your hair. Let me braid your hair, that type of stuff. But um, I walk by this gentleman, Felton Cox, and um, he's like, excuse me, sir. It's not like your voice. And, um, and I, we got to talking to him, and I said, well, my whole, my whole group's not out here yet, but um, we come back out. If you're still here, I'll go with you. And sure enough, we came back out, and he's standing there, and I said, all right, we're ready for that tour. And um, since that time, I've sort of developed a fan friendship with Felton. Um, the times we've been back, we've taken some other groups and, and went in his van there with him. But even the, recently, we went back, we just stopped in and saw him. But um, I had got up with him because I thought I figured Felton, what I really enjoyed about him is he's a real estate agent on the island as well as he's from the political office and all that. Just a very um, genuine person that really loves his island and shows off, um, loves the Bahamas and, and, and likes to talk about the Bahamas. I, I learned so much from him. So I contacted him. I had his email address and we finally talked for the first time last night. But he is, I said, Felton, I said, can you set up a private island tour for us? One that's just for us. And so um, he's like, absolutely. And so this is still a work in progress. But um, I'm waiting to hear back exactly from me. But on that island tour, I know what Felton will do is take us to all the popular destinations, the Finn Castle Fort. He'll take us to Junkano Beach, the Queen Staircase, but, you know, Governor's Mansion, all that kind of stuff. But he'll also let us like, take you out by the sea, the island. And he'll show you the different real estate, the different areas, and so forth. A um, very genuine man. And um, along with that, what is it? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Along with that, we'll do the Ardastro Gardens and Zoo. As I shared with you, they're very famous for their flamingos. I was talking about it last night. I talked to some other folks about it. But um, the flamingos actually listen to military commands, and they do what they They have like a, a, a drill master that's out there with them, and he makes some march and about faces and halts, and, and all the flamingos do this, this show for you. Okay? I think as far as a zoo, it's a relatively very small zoo. But as part of that tour, the guys, I've got on here $45, three and a half hours. Um, it should not be any more than $45. What we're waiting on is he was trying to get the price of tickets for the Ardastra Zoo and the price of a charter bus because he thought if he got a charter bus and he could do the tour, that it would be cheaper. Yeah. Okay, let's see the Ardastra Zoo. Yeah. Oh, it's good. Well, hold on, let me unmute Always forget about the meeting button. There we go. Ready? This is a very good place to visit the Ottawa, especially for people that love family friendly experiences. The Adashi Gardens started back in 1937. So we have about a little over 200 animals in the Adashi Gardens birds, mammals, reptiles. Exact price here probably within a week, but um, I talked to him last night. He's trying to check on a 39 passenger charter bus, and uh, he's got a 15 passenger van that he hauls 12 people in. He says 
because it's more comfortable. But um, I'll know that price, but you're probably looking at somewhere between $30 and the $45 for the cost of that one, okay? Again, it does not matter to me. Choose the one that you guys want to do, okay? I want you to enjoy NASA. I want you to see the things that you want to see concerning NASA, okay? Any questions about? Yeah, oh yeah, there's a fifth one, and you don't see it on here, okay? There's a fifth one. For those that don't want to spend any money on excursions, we will have some folks that just simply go downtown. They get off the boat and they go walk around. There's plenty to, to shop and do, walk around downtown. And so they'll spend some time doing that that day. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. I have never felt unsafe in that song. And especially with someone like Felton, we've gone around with him. You know, everywhere we go, hey, Felton, everybody knows Felton because he ran political office and he's such a mistake on that. So, um, yes? There may be, yeah, and that depends on the numbers. You know, it's kind of hard, you know, because and, and he said, well, I've got my van or I can do the charter bus. I said, let's see what it's costing the charter bus. You know, I think if he does the van, we're looking at about $30 a person. But, no, no, absolutely. If they want to do a morning and afternoon excursion, now I don't know that Felton will have an afternoon excursion. It depends on how many signs up. Okay? Now, flip the last page. This is important. This is something that we need back this week. Okay? Let me pull back over and make sure I'm pretty sure it's this week. Okay? This form right here. Okay? Notice at the top, I need the participant's name, t-shirt size. There's a possibility we may try to get trip shirts. We're working that out, trying to get it in budget right now. But the most important, well, the most important thing, notice on here, I said check at least one, your Nassau excursion interest form. There are five listed. One's the Atlantis, one's the Sea and Sea Island Tour, one is the Selling and Snorkeling, one is the Private Island Tour and our Ardest Ardestra Gardens and Zoo, and then the fifth one is Shopping. And it tells you a little bit again about each one right there. Okay. I need you to mark one of those. I need these forms turned in. Go ahead. Or you can mark two, right? As long as they're not at the same time. I don't see where you can do the C and C Island tour and the selling and store clean at the same time. Okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. It'll be like maybe an hour or so shot. Yeah, okay? Now Look at the second part of that, guys. Proof of citizenship. If you will, let us know. Just put a check marker next if you're using a birth certificate or a passport. We're starting to put these folders together in the next couple of weeks. We need to be able to mark so we know. So we'll, we'll create a checklist for each folder. Okay. Food allergies. If you have any food allergies, I need to let Royal Caribbean know that if you're allergic to peanuts or allergic to something. I need to let. The, I'll actually let the travel agency know. And they will let Royal Caribbean know. Notice it says that yes, what are your food allergies? What symptoms do you have? What medications do you take? Dr. Mike, you kind of need to know that too. So we'll have all that information, okay? And our other medical folks. <laughs> then notice on the bottom, permission for parasailing and or snorkeling. Now, some of these things where they sign up when we were there, like parasailing on Coco Cay or snorkeling in Nassau, we're going to have to sign off on the forms because they're not going to see them until that morning. So what that does, notice it says, I grant my child blank permission to parasail or snorkel, and you'll mark those at the bottom while visiting Coco Cay in Nassau. I understand these activities will take place during the cruise in the Bahamas, and it's operated by a contractor hired by Royal Caribbean. I also understand there will be an additional charge for this activity. My students responsible for the annual expense. By giving permission, I'll release Milton High School and the cruise chaperones. Many liabilities should an accident occur. I also authorize them to sign off on any waiver forms that may be required. Let's say that... You know, your child does want to go snorkeling. When we get there that morning, one of us, the staff members, are going to have to sign off for those kids. All that's saying is that I'm okay with my kid going snorkeling, or I'm okay with my kid Parasol. I'm telling you, Ray, we weren't getting up in the air on Parasol. Okay? But um, not at all. So, um, But if you'll simply mark one or both or none, okay, if they're, you're not getting permission to do any, leave it blank. Okay? Just so make sure the name's at the top of that form. Any questions about that form? It's due, and it's all, we're going to be there in just a second. It is due by Friday, this Friday, February 21st. So if you'll talk to excursions this week and try to get this in, that way we can go ahead and start booking the World Caribbean ones. 
No, not yet. That'll be the next. That'll be the final trip. Later. Go ahead and sign off on it anyway, because I hate to get there and then you know this is going to say so. They could probably sign on their own, but I'm not sure. We only have just um, about ten on the eight team. Okay, required forms. You just saw that one. Let's go ahead and move back to the other packet, and we'll move through this pretty quick. It's all this basic general information. Chaperone. So required form. This one we just showed you. Well, let's go ahead and look at services due this Friday. Chaperone acknowledgement responsibility forms. If you're chaperoning, please see this brief. We've got a form we've got to get back to straight A tours about two months ago that um, we need you to sign off on, saying you acknowledge that you're taking responsibility along with us for these students that we're taking. It's due by Friday. Student conduct and parent agreement forms. Looks like it has a festivals at sea at the top. Okay? We have to take these, get these back to straight A tours as well. I need you guys to read through this, fill it out, read through it, sign it at the bottom. I need these back by Friday so we can get these to straight A tours. Okay? This one has to be notarized as well. Where's Miss Williamson? She's in my office, okay? Is that where she's going to do it? Everything? Okay. At the back table, when we get done, she will be back there notarizing if you need it to be notarized, okay? You go ahead and fill it out, get it notarized, and get it turned in tonight. But we got to get those back by Friday. Okay? Also, rock climbing wall, bungee trampoline waiver forms. The, crew, the travel agency sent us these. Okay? If your child wants to do the rock climbing wall on board the boat or the bungee trampoline, we got to have these as well. All right? If, you know, Greg Weaver's mama doesn't have to fill these out because he's not going to do anything where he's got to go high at his own strength. Okay? So, um, but if they plan to participate on board the boat, we need these Royal Caribbean forms returned back by Friday. Okay, are those notarized as well? So you got to get those notarized as well, okay? So both of those forms notarized. And then the parasailing snorkeling permission slip, we talked about that's on the bottom of that sheet. We actually, just or last night, merged those together, okay? So again, let's go over those forms. The excursion interest form, it has the different things, food allergies. Um, birth certificate, passport, due Friday. Chaperones, your form, due Friday. Student contract, parent agreement forms, due Friday, must be notarized. Rock climbing wall, bungee trampoline, waiver forms, Royal Caribbean, must be notarized due on Friday. Okay? Does everybody follow me on that? What to wear? You want to, might, may want to go ahead and start sort of planning. At the next meeting, we're going to talk about how to pack. I'm going to give you some suggestions so that you can, you can, you know, you can wear clothes. Uh, for two nights and kind of mix and match and that kind of stuff. But you need comfortable clothing for the majority. That's um, shorts, t-shirts, sandals, etc. for being around. Swimwear. I know that swimsuits are fixing to come back out, but let me remind you, if it jiggles, cover it up. Okay? That is my rule. So if it jiggles, cover it up. Bray Weaver won't be walking around with that shirt on. Okay? So just understand that. Also, also, be thinking about a route or cover-up, especially ladies, guys. When you go in the buffet areas and so forth, you'll see people that do it. To me, it's real unclassy. But put on a cover-up. You're going to go up food. Don't go up there with a bikini or without a shirt on, guys. Okay? But have a cover-up or T-shirt or something. Because other folks are in there trying to enjoy their meal, and um, they don't need that. Okay? Um, the dining room. During the daytime, dress is casual. You might, but you got to wear shoes. Uh, shorts and sandals are okay. Okay, for dining room, that's where you have the waiter, assistant waiter. It's open during the day as well for breakfast and lunch. And the buffet's open during the day as well. The dining room at night, okay, on informal nights. Um, they do have some general rules, no jeans, t-shirts, or shorts allowed in the dining room at night. It needs to be long pants, no jeans. Okay, so, so you know, um, understand that. Um, first night is informal, young ladies, you can wear like dress pants, casual dress, or skirt or blouse. Guys, you can wear dress pants, open collar shirt, Without a tie, you don't have to wear a tie. Just an open collar polo shirt or something like that. Something like what I'm wearing is fine for, for non formal night, casual nights. Okay? The second night is formal night. Some of the young ladies will wear their prom dresses and their homecoming dresses. That's, a, that's fine. You can dress up all you want to. Some guys will wear tuxes. Some men will on board the boat. Okay? Not required. Any ladies, any, dr Sunday, any dressy type Sunday dress or semi formal or formal gown. Okay? Just look nice that night is the main thing. Guys, a suit and tie, slacks, a sport coat and a tie. Okay, a tux is, is appropriate, but it's not, not 
Not required, yeah. Um, I went to the dirt cheap, they did dirt cheap in Pensacola, and they had a bunch of suit coats and sports jackets there for very cheap price if anybody needed it. For dirt cheap. Dirt cheap. Dirt cheap. Dirt cheap. Dirt cheap. Yeah. So, thank you for that. So, you know, or borrow or, or whatever you need to do. But that form of night, here, here was the best part of the cruise, I mean, was watching our young adults walk in decked out and taking pictures, and they're just sparkling and glowing and shining and all that good stuff, okay? And then the third night's informal. Again, they can choose to eat the buffet that night even. The fourth night is informal. They can choose to eat the buffet or they go to the dining room. I shared with you the last time that a bunch of students came back in dressed for the hill, so it's a little last night of the cruise. It's kind of cool to have the waiter and the assistant waiter and all these folks just right there waiting on you. If you think of the Beauty and the Beast and the BR guest and all that kind of stuff, it's that same thing too. Okay, so in Nassau, what to wear? Depending on the excursion you choose, you may want slim wear or cool clothing. Of course, comfortable shoes, don't forget sunblock. We don't need little lobsters. Shopping downtown, the straw market, um, you know, I don't want to put straw market on there, but just remind you that you'll be bartering and, and bargaining and so forth for stuff there. In Coco Cay, Swimwear, beachwear, again, don't forget to cover up for that. And again, we'll reiterate the next trip meeting that we have. Sunblock, you may want water shoes. Some of us have, have sensitive feet and we like water shoes, okay? You may not, you may go barefoot when you get in the water or whatever. Some, I threw that on there with a question mark. Some of you may want that, all right? Flip the page. Now we're moving. Food on board the boat, just to kind of give you a, an idea. The five fair ladies, the name of the dining room, open for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and sit down service. Again, with a, with a full weight style. The Windjammer Cafe is the buffet. It has breakfast, lunch, dinner, and late night stuff. It's self-service. The buffet varies. They have usually a salad fruit bar. They have a dessert bar. Um, there's ice cream. I, I mentioned to you on board that they have the Ben and Jerry's. Okay? It is, um, and I think it's maybe it's listed in our specialty shops, but there's additional charges, but you're probably looking at 2 or 3 or $4 for that. How much was it? Five? Depending on the size you guys as much as five, okay? So there are specialty shops, so um, be aware of that. There's a pizza buffet or pizza bar where you go and get pizza. It closes at a certain time. There's also a deli where you can get like um, sandwiches and that kind of stuff. They do have free ice cream in Windjammer. Okay, in Windjammer they do have the, the free ice cream for you. Good, I know Carnival did. I was hoping that was the case there. All right, room service is available 24 hours. There's a menu in the cabin. Now, room service doesn't cost anything unless you order between 12 midnight and 5 a.m. And there's a $3.95 charge that's billed to your, yeah, $4 for room service, okay? But, so, you're sitting there that afternoon and you want a grilled cheese sandwich and, or whatever, look on the room service menu, you call it room service. Here you go, Mel. Okay? It's included in the price. Yes, sir. They a lot of times still have to sign off on a tip, though. Yeah. So, yeah, they will hand you a little bill type of little thing and it'll put gratuity on there. So, um, you know, if folks are doing that, you, you probably need to think about giving a dollar, two dollar tip. Okay? So, don't forget about that. Um, specialty shops. There's Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream. There's a Cafe Latitudes that has Starbucks coffee. Again, there's a charge to that and snacks. They'll have, like, a cake that looks humongous and really good and that kind of stuff. Um, additional charges. Um, there's a steakhouse, I believe it's 18 and over, for the adults called Chops Grill, and it's $30 per person, okay, but it'll be, uh, you want to talk about a super fine dining experience, okay, the Chops Grill. I told you about the Coke Freestyle Machine, they have that with a soda package. Notice there's a, they have some drink packages that are available, and you set all this up on board for all refreshment drink packages, unlimited soda with a souvenir cup, it's $18 for age 17 and under, 26 for age 18 and over. And then notice they have the Royal Replenished Drink Package, unlimited soda with souvenir cup, premium coffee and tea at the little specialty shops, bottled waters, fresh squeezed orange juice, and non-alcoholic cocktails. That's $20 per day, or which will turn into 80 for the cruise, because you pay for every day, correct, Ms. Weaver? Yeah, you can't just do it. Okay, just want one day of that. It's 80 bucks if you want to do that. Just throw that out there. Again, if you have special dietary needs, please note that on the excursion form. Medical needs, Dr. Mayu will be traveling with us. Um, prescription medications, we will check those in Sunday night, Monday morning, 11.30 to about 1.30. Okay. And um, motion sickness, and we'll address this a lot more on March 11th. But guys, I'm one of those that can sit in the back seat of a car, and I'll be having my head out the window sick and nauseous. Okay. Dr. Mike, you can vouch for that. Um, 
the little patches work, and the little patches dry me out, but I cut them in half, and it works just fine. Dramamine, Bodine, okay, anything else you recommend? I get sick on anything, yeah. and the C-bands, or what? And the little C-bands, you get those at Walmart, the drugstore, whatever. I'll wear a C-band, usually I'll take a Dramamine before we set sail, I'll put on a C-band, and I'll put on a half if I think. And guys, at the next meeting, listen to me, at the next meeting, I'll give you some, some, some hints as far as if the seas get rough, what you can do to help eliminate that. Yes, ma'am. Oh, they'll check those in with it. Well, the C bands they can have with them. The other medication um, will need to be checked in. Okay, or not the patches. Probably the patches are okay. Yeah, patch goes on stays on. Do I know? No, no. adults, adults are on their own. Yeah, we don't take care of you. Okay. All right, moving on real quick, guys. Um. So be thinking about that. Be thinking about what you need. If you need to get a prescription for the patches, what are those called? Transderm scope. Transderm scope patches. Okay. Band Bank. Well, again, we'll provide that on the trip. Ms. Foster, I'm hoping we'll do that again for us. Um, you can deposit money in the Band Bank for safekeeping, and then withdrawals can be made on Wednesday morning before we leave the ship, and on Friday morning before we get off the ship. And there are in-room safes in each cabin. Communications. Cell phone and texting, international rates, let me, let me tell you, okay, you need to turn it off, okay, we were coming back from a cruise about a year ago, I could see Miami, Facebook was calling my name, I could see Miami, let me just check and see, AT&T, I didn't think about when I went downstairs of losing the AT&T signal, and as I was walking downstairs, I heard texts go ding, 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 ding. It was all band kids and band parents going, we in the band camp, all this kind of stuff. The next day, AT&T calls me, we just want to let you know, you've got $260, $260 worth of charges of international roaming rates from last night. Okay? So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, guys, listen, it's real important. Airplane mode, and then I went to AT&T, and you can turn off data uh, so you don't get data as well. Okay? They have cellular at C, which, you know, your phone will show if you do turn it on and you pay through them, and it's very expensive. Um, I put two-way radios on here because I know folks go, well, how do you communicate on board the boat? We've tried the two-way radios before, and everybody seems to be thinking about two-way radios, and so every time we've ever tried them, you hear everybody else except the people you're trying to get in touch with because there's only so many channels, and then they go dead, and we never recharge them. Some you may want to consider little walkie-talkie type things, but again, um, what we've discovered, we've tried those with adults before, and it just didn't work. Yes, ma'am. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Good question. Now, notice this: calls can be made from your stateroom. That's no worse for the ship back home, but it's seven ninety-five a minute. I don't know why. So, Carnival is one ninety-five a minute on a Carnival ship, but seven ninety-five per minute, and that's charged to your stateroom and then the folks inside the stateroom. Okay, I'm telling you that because you're going to go, what am I going to do about my baby for four days? Okay? Notice this. If parents call the ship, and you can do that, parents, it's also $7.95 per minute. Okay? And it's satellite phone, and it's not very high quality. Um, what I will, the internet charge, she asked about internet. There is internet on board. It is slow. It is satellite. Okay? It is slow, and it starts about at, at the nice rates if you get four hours, about $25 per hour, and goes up from there. But if you ever knew what the dollar modem was, dong, dong, here, that speed, it's about that speed, okay? And I'll tell you that because what I do, what I did the last time this worked, is every day through our charms emails, or possibly maybe on our, our, on our band website, is um, I will take out as a band a, short, a small internet package, and I'll type up an email, I'll log on, I'll send the email through charms, and um, everybody will get it. Okay, that's on the band trip, because Charms actually sets out those folks that are on the band trip. And I'll send out an update. I thought that was me. So, okay. <laughs> Mine sounds like that too. This is um, the update for today. We all had fun with Coco K, L M, whoever that is. Looks like a little lobster because they didn't listen about the sunblock, but don't worry, parents, we got plenty of, of you know aloe vera on them or whatever. Okay? So that's what it did last time, and, and it seemed to work. Everybody kind of enjoyed getting the updates every day. And um, I tried to make them humorous when I could, that kind of stuff. That's how we'll communicate back home, okay? Everybody's accounted for. We're back on the boat from Nassau. You know, everybody's here. We're leaving Nassau now, 
Okay, so I'll provide those. Um, they can't call for Nassau. Again, it's expensive. Okay, international charges. Um, on that, there's a whole bank of, of cell phones, or not cell phones, but pay phones, or there used to be. And I remember calling home and talking about that for four minutes, and it cost $34 if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so just be, be aware of that. Onboard activities. And we're wrapping up. Teen Club, 12 to 17 years old, now 18 year olds. I don't think you'll be able to go on the Teen Club. Okay, but they have a variety of activities during the day. They have socials, they have dances, they have um, volleyball, uh, three on three basketball, all that kind of stuff up on the sports deck. Okay, and and they print out those little, little um, programs. They're in the, the big program as well, but they print out little cards each day, to let you know what's going on with that. 18 years old and above, we'll talk. We'll have some different activities. There's some other activities that you can do. Okay, or you may want to bring board games and hang out somewhere in the public areas and play games and that kind of stuff. There are Broadway style shows, maybe one or two nights on board the boat. We go to the theater and there's a big Broadway style with singers and dancers, that type of stuff. There's a late night pirate buffet, remember the night that we're in Nassau. Something to think about, bring your, your pirate wear. Um, possible 70s dance party night. I saw a video on YouTube of that. It takes place in the Centrum area. And they're doing YMCA and folks are all dressed up like the village people and, and all that. That takes place one night probably. Contest and trivia games are taking place bingo. There's a charge for bingo, you buy the cards, but you might win $500 on a free cruise. And that stuff. There's table tennis up on the sports deck. There's, um, let's see, moving on, video game arcade, charges apply. There's an outside poolside movie screen. Sometimes they show movies, especially at night. Sometimes they show if there's a special sporting event, such as the Olympics. I know they're showing some of the Olympics on the ships right now. Um, that kind of stuff goes on. There's some major networks on the TV. Sometimes there's first run movies. News channels, there's lots of ship channels to tell you about all different excursion points and all that kind of stuff. There's swimming, there's hot tubs, there's sun deck, there's a jogging track, there's a sports deck, and all of that off that has basketball and, and different things like that. Hut putt, if I'm not if I remember seeing correctly. Rock climbing wall, bungee trampoline, I'm talking about notarized waiver. There's informational seminars, such as shopping in Nassau, all um, that kind of stuff that you can go to. And there is the spa there on board, and they do offer to have some teen offers as well for teenagers. Okay, so there's plenty for you to do the few hours that we're on board. Other stuff, we'll flip the page. Charter bus, we're going with Gulf Coast Tours. And um, sign-ups, the students know this sign-ups are due by Thursday in that box right there by our office and the little slips are right across the table. They kind of request what bus they want to be on, who they want to sit with and sit by. Just know that we're going to be driving all night down and all night back, so make sure you get along with that person, please. Adult bus sign-ups, rooming list, we've already got all that kind of put together. Um, I don't think I printed any of those. Ms. Tina, do you have a copy of it? I have a copy. Huh? Yes, sir. Okay, did you see Ms. Tina? The rooming list, yeah, the bus, the bus list. We've already got those, those folks to sign. Electrical out in the cabin. Guys, there's only one or two plugs in your cabin, and they're usually right there. I always encourage the folks when they go to think about taking one of those electrical bars, okay? You know, with everybody trying to blow dry their hair and, and all that kind of stuff. So I would definitely recommend looking at the power strip, maybe even extension cord. There are some adult-only areas, 18 and over, the solarium is one of those. Now, there's not that anything bad goes on, it's just a quiet area, okay? So if you're not 18, you need to make sure you stay out of there. There are also some adult-only activities on board, some comedians, that kind of stuff. It's only for 18 and over. Um, room captain, chaperone assignments. Guys, the way they've worked this out, we pretty much have a chaperone room directly next to every student room. We're kind of scattered out over three floors, and uh, but there's an adult room right next door to a, um, to a student room, okay? So what we've sort of done is assigned those adults to that student room. We had no control of this. This is how they did it, straight A tours and festival seats did it for us. But, um, so they'll have chap <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> chaperone assignments, and, um, and then we'll have a rain captain for each room and so forth. Sorry, I'll jump up. <coughs> we'll have some group meetings on board the ship. You've seen some of those, but may have some others. Quiet time on board is at 11 p.m. when the curfew varies. In the bathrooms, there is a dispenser on the wall in the shower that has kind of a shampoo body wash in it, kind of a combo type thing, but you'll probably want to bring everything else for that. You may want to consider the deodorizer spray as well. You know we all have to use number one. Oh, thank you. We all have to use number one. We all have to do number two. We've learned on band trips that folks don't do number two start feeling bad. Okay, right, Doc? And so, you know, 
the, uh, the bathrooms are extremely small. Okay, the rooms are extremely small. Um, pool towels, again, if they're missing, they're charged to the room, so be careful about those. Drinks and room, guys, and I, hopefully they'll pull them out, but sometimes, and it's very tempting, they'll leave some soft drinks, bottles of water and stuff, right over there on your counter. No carnival is bad about that. They're about $2.50 or $3 a piece, so when you drink them, it's going to be charged to your room. You're going to have to figure out who did it, okay? And uh, they'll leave a little bit of ice and so forth as well, so something to think about. And we'll talk more in detail next time. Climate controlled rooms. If you like the air to move, you may want to consider a little small fan for your room, okay? Because usually there's a control inside the room or up on the, where the vent's at. And um, if you're used to air moving a ceiling fan or whatever, you'll find it's hard to sleep without the air moving, okay? So you can get a little bit of Walmart, get a little small fans, that kind of stuff to help the air move. Um, sign up for Remind 101 text messages. We have got something new that we are using now with the band. It's an educational text messaging system called Remind 101 that allows us to send out text, but you cannot send text back to us, okay? For the trip, what you need to do is look at the number 850-637-8697 and text the, the symbol at MHS trip. That will sign you up for that. So as we're getting close for the next few weeks, we'll be sending out reminders. We just send a text, it goes out to everybody signed up for that group. Okay, you can leave the group at any time. We get back off the trip. We'll probably delete everybody out of the group. Okay, but, um, but that's the one for the trip. There's also others that we've sent out via email for the symphonic band, the concert band, but that's the one for the trip. Adults that are attending the trip. I've got a trip adult one where I can send you information just between us and the chaperones, okay? Between now and then, that number is 850-637-8712, and you text the word at trip adults, at symbol trip adults, okay? You do that, we can communicate with you in an efficient manner. Don't forget that all trip fees and band fees must be paid prior to the trip. All right, so please make sure, guys, we can't have exceptions on that. Um, as I shared in an email a while back, we got all, most of all the marching band bills paid, and we're broke, right, Miss Nancy? We're broke, okay? Okay, we've got um, quite a bit, there's thousands of dollars still out, and we still got the rest of the year, so I can't say, yeah, you go on the trip now, but we know you still owe 400 band fees, okay? That can happen. We can't reimburse your money from the trip, so please work to get that in. We'll cut grass, whatever you got to do, right, please? Resources. <laughs> The MHS band website, everything from tonight's meeting, this packet, the video that we're making with that video camera. Hey, everybody turn around looking at the video camera. Okay? The video of, of us online, all that stuff, is, and the videos you watch today are on the band website already, except for that video. It's going to be uploaded, all, every bit of packets and every bit of paperwork that you uh, are getting, just in case you may lose this. So it's all going to be up on there probably by tomorrow, okay? Also, Royal Caribbean, if you want to go check out the, the floors of the ship, it's right there, royalcaribbean.com. YouTube, I just encourage you to go to YouTube, type in Enchantment of the Seas, you will find hundreds of videos from 70s Disco Party Night to here's what the waiters did in the dining room, and here's our tour and what happened to us while we were on board, and that kind of stuff. So check that out, all right? Last but not least, uh, and we know what we did do, sign up for tonight, didn't we? Grab some notepads out of things, get those passed around. Um, scrap five or six, they're in the cabinet up top. I forget about that. Um, more information to follow. Student meeting on Tuesday, March 11th at 4 o'clock. And the MHS banner report about 6. We're going to be doing just a student meeting, but adults that are going, if you want to come, by all means, come on up. We're going to talk a little about the history of Nassau. We're going to go through dining etiquette. Okay, the forks, the, the, the silverware, what to use for what. Okay, the artillery there. Rules and policies, how to pack for the trip. The check-in debarkation points, and then how you know dealing with U.S. Customs and Homeland Security. There's certain keywords that you don't say, such as explosive, <laughs> bomb, that kind of stuff. Okay, you know, smuggle. All right. So any of that, we'll go over that on March the 11th. Then that night we'll do at 6:30. We'll finish that meeting at 6. At 6:30 we'll do our final information meeting um, before we leave on the trip. That's for parents and students. That's where I give you here's the ship contact number. Let's talk about exactly what you need to pack, how you need to pack, okay? Yeah, just, if, if you put the kid's name, the student's name that's on here, that'd be great. Okay. You'll put, um, yeah, whatever student's represented that way, okay? 
And then last but not least, Thursday night, March 13th, chaperones that are going on the trip, please block out that night. That's where we're going to give you all the nuts and bolts of what we need from you as a chaperone aboard the boat. Okay? Dinner will be provided, probably firehouse subs, but we'll have dinner that night. We'll meet here at 6.30 the day, and it'll probably take about an hour, hour and a half for that meeting. Okay? Okay? And when you get the form signed off, Ms. Williamson, thank you for volunteering and doing this. One of our band parents works here in our guidance office. Is um, is right back here, Ms. Tina. Hold on, guys. Hold on. I need volunteer forms from several parents that are going on the trip as well. If you're going on the trip and you have not completed volunteer forms, if you'll see Ms. Tina in the back here in just a few moments. Guys, let's do it real quick. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, and we're going to have another trip meeting March 11th, but please, email is the best way to reach me. Okay, probably texting is the second best. All right? If you have questions, let me know. Thank you, Ms. Schultz. Brittany needs to see all the leadership that's going okay, on. Thank you. Have a great evening.